Hello. In this video, I'll explain how to play a four-player game, uh, my new game, Democracy. In the beginning of every game, you will get six Democracy cards, it's this top row here, and you'll get five Legislation cards, that's this bottom row here. You'll also get two voting tokens, one approved, one opposed. In the Democracy deck, there are three kinds of cards. There are politicians, as you can see, Alan here. There are supporter cards, as you can see, the adjunct professors and textbook publishers and such. There's also wild cards. I'm not going to get into that in this video. Let me talk about the politician card for a second. You can see there are three parts on the card. First is the number of hearts, and that re represents the politician's political willpower, his ability or her ability to withstand uh, betrayal and disappointment, um, scandals, that sort of thing. The second stat here is the number of cards that a politician can carry. And you can see here there's all these different little supporter cards. Alan, for example, can carry two of these. The third stat here is this number, 15th. This is Alan's ranking. And it demonstrates where in the roster Alan is and who he will get to vote before and after. We'll get into that a little bit later. The second thing I want to look at here are the legislation cards. So you can see that on the legislation card, there are little icons with approved and opposed. So kidnaps and foreign scientists, for example, has a light bulb behind the approved, and it has a scales behind the opposed icon. And if you look up here at the supporter cards, you can also see the same icons showing up on these supporters. These icons represent agendas, and they tie the supporters to these legislation pieces. Uh, the supporter cards have two aspects that you need to pay attention to. One is the affiliation to an agenda, such as the light bulb for education, uh, the globe for environmentalism, and so on. The second is the number of icons, and that represents how many votes the supporter is worth. At the beginning of the game, as I said, this is what you'll get. These bottom cards, these legislation cards, and these tokens here, you'll hold on to those for the entire game. This hand, up top, you will receive six of these, you'll pick one to play, and then you're going to pass them to the next player. You'll get the leftover cards from the person before you, so pick one and pass them on. And in that way, you're going to cycle through a lot of these cards. And the democracy cards represent the things that you will draft and play in front of you. And that'll give you the ability to vote or oppose uh, these, to either sponsor or oppose these legislation uh, cards. OK, so I've mocked up kind of a what a table would look like if it was laid out for us. And as you can see, we have <clears throat> our cards down here all laid out. And then we're representing player two, three, and four up there in the corners. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're going to do with ours. Now, looking across our legislation cards, I'm going to wind up proposing one of these in this round. And if this was a full game, I'd wind up proposing four out of the five of these legislation cards. And I've got this hand here, which is a bunch of supporters and one politician. Now, I don't know how many other politicians are in this round. Uh, so, because I need a politician to carry any supporters that I'm going to play later, I'm going to start off by picking Alan. He's a pretty good politician. He's 15th. There's only 32 politicians, so he's pretty decent. I'll pick him, and I'm hoping that I'll get one of these other legislation cards or one of these supporter cards later on. They're all pretty good cards. Each of these supporters is going to have between one to three votes. So I've got four cards here with two, which is actually a really strong hand. It'd be nice to pick one of those up, but I think the priority right now is the politician. So I pick up the politician, and if we look around the table, we can see over here, uh, player two picked up Karen Ferndinger. Player three picked up a uh, supporter that they thought was particularly attractive. And over here, this player also picked up a politician. And you can see the cards kind of arrayed here behind this democ democracy card back so that you can kind of see uh, they are holding these hands. And all the cards that I just had a moment ago, I passed to my left. According to this, this, this is the centerpiece, and the arrows show you which way to pass the cards. So I passed to my left. And so you can see those are the cards I used to have. And these cards here that I now have in my hand, I got from this guy. So let's look at what he passed me. 
Let's see, we have another politician and we have four more supporters. Again, we've got a lot of two votes, which is actually pretty good. Uh, this isn't a bad politician. He's a little bit lower on the totem pole than Alan at 21 versus 15. But looking across my cards, I see that I've got a couple cards that tie to economic interests. And here I have an economic supporter card with two votes. So that's pretty strong for me. I like that. I'm going to pick that one up. Same thing happens. I pass to the left. I receive the cards from my right. Here's my new hand. I'm going to pick up another politician. Alan's great. He's got three hearts. That's actually pretty strong. But he can only carry two supporter groups. And I don't know how many more politicians are, I'm going to see. Phyllis Jones here is actually a, very, a fairly strong politician. At 14th, she's actually a little bit better than Alan. So I want to pick her up so that I can carry as many support groups as I have as I need to. And also these support groups honestly aren't that great. There are a couple ones. I'll see more. All right, so I've passed my cards on. I've received another three. This is um, these two cards here are pretty worthless to me. I don't have any interest in this, uh, the bottle thing. I've got two cards that oppose it. Um, so it's kind of a disincentive sometimes to pick up that card. I do have a couple cards that are against uh, civil rights, and he's got two votes. I kind of don't want to pick up things that I oppose right now. But on the other hand, he's got two votes. So I'll worry about that later. This is a fairly bad politician, so I'm not going to pick him up. And I'll take this <clears throat> two vote uh, the immigrants for their two civil rights votes and attach them, attach them to Phyllis Jones. I've passed them on now. Now I've received another two cards. And here is my original hand, you'll notice. And um, I've got one more of those cards remaining that have two votes. Well, that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. So I'm going to pick this one up. I'm going to attach it to Alan. So there we go. This is, this is the hand. I've now played my five cards. I'm sorry, I actually attached it to Phyllis. I mistake. So this is the five, these are the five cards that I picked up. I'm going to look around the table and see what everybody else has been doing. Over here, we have a lot of pro-life votes. Karen has five votes, or Karen and Peter here have five votes total. There's two for the minivan manufacturers, two for the textbook publishers, and one for the Mormons. So there's five votes there, and it's very strongly pro-life. Three of those five votes are pro-life. Up here with Willie Dillinger, we see that he only has three votes. Two are from the adjunct professors who support legalizing weed, and one is from the small business uh, card that supports the economy. That's good for me because I also have an economy card, so he might be a potential ally something to keep in mind. Notice that Willie here can only hold two cards. And so once he got these two cards, he's full up. In their hand, we're just going to take a peek here. You can see they actually have, this player has two more supporter cards, but because Willie is full, he can't play those. He's going to have to hold on to these. And next drafting round, when he picks up another politician, he can attach those to his next politician. For now, they just sit in his hand. They're worthless. Over here, we can see a really strong civil rights group. Like the player two, these guys have five votes total. Four of them are for civil rights, and then one is for gun rights. I also have a civil rights agenda here. So I'm hoping that they propose something that has to do with civil rights, because I could get a point from that. Later. So I've identified a couple of potential allies just by looking around the board. And now it's going to be time to vote. This is where the priority comes in. And you can see up here, his lowest, this is player three, his lowest politician uh, is 16th in line. Over here, this guy's 31st in line. He's going to be last. Karen is 12th in line, and my lowest is actually 14th. So Karen's going to go first, then Phyllis, then Christopher, and then Willie. The other politicians that we carry that have lower numbers and that are the, have higher numbers, um, those are irrelevant to this selection. You just look at the lowest politician that each player has, and then you go in order, lowest to high. So Karen and Peter sponsor this doozy of a bill, Trigger a Volcano for Science. They're interested in this because it has the education uh, light bulb. Nobody else is particularly interested in it, except I'm opposed to it, because I have people who live in cities, and they, 
are uh, environmentalists, and environmentalists are opposed to this. So I look at this and say, I need to vote against it. If I voted for it, I would lose this card, and Phyllis here would get a heart, uh, would, would lose one of her hearts. As it stands, I'm just going to oppose it. I could still wind up losing uh, one of my hearts because uh, it looks like everybody else with no skin in the game, they're all kind of incentivized to just vote for this. If you vote on the winning side and you pass something successfully, that's worth a point. So everybody's kind of in on this, except for me. I can't vote for it because I don't want to betray my supporters and lose those two votes. That's a third of my votes. It's a big deal for me right now. So this is how the voting goes. These three players all vote for it. I vote against it. Because I voted against it and I lost. Uh, and by the way, I forgot to tally up the votes here. So let's back up the slide. So looking at the approvals versus the opposing. So approving it, you have five votes here, three votes here, and five votes here. That's five, eight, 13 votes approving this bill. On the other hand, I only have six votes. So it's 13 for it, six against it. So it passes. Because it passed and I opposed it, I voted on the wrong side of history, so to speak. So because of that, I lose a heart, a little broken heart. On the other hand, over here in player two's corner, they did pretty well. They sponsored a bill and it passed. That gets them one vote. They also voted for a bill that passed. That gets them a second vote. Up here, Willie Dillinger, he voted for a bill that passed, so he gets a point. And the same thing goes for these guys. I didn't score any points because I opposed it. It passed. Basically a lose-lose situation for me. Okay, so now it's my turn to sponsor a bill. Out of the five that I had in my hand, I've got two that, my, that I've got my eye on. As I said before, I was looking at this guy, and I see that he's an ally because he's got the economy and I've got the economy. And I've got this bill, which is in the child tax credit, and it's economically focused. So he and I would both be incentivized to vote for this thing. On the other hand, I can see that this one is backed by, is going to be backed by this player because it's got the gun rights token on it. Uh, and I can see that this guy is a gun rights supporter. I don't have gun rights, so it's not as interesting to me. But with this in the child tax credit bill, I don't know how this top left, top right player is going to go. I've got six votes down here, and I'm going to vote yes, regardless. If this guy's my ally, he only has three votes. That means six plus three is nine. On the other hand, these guys have 10 votes between them. So if this guy in the top right corner decides that he's going to vote against me, then his votes, his five votes, plus the five pro-life votes, which are definitely going to be against me because of this uh, anti-pro-life uh, icon down here in the corner, that's going to be nine to 10, and I'll lose the vote. I really want to win this. So I'm going to sponsor this Implement the Purge bill because I know that this guy is going to be my ally in this bill. So that's going to be five plus my six. That's 11 votes for it. It doesn't matter how these guys vote. It's going to pass no matter. So that's what happens. I propose this, I vote yes, he votes yes because it's within his interest, and this guy votes yes because he gets a point if he's on the winning side. On the other hand, this player votes against it because she has the pro-life movement and they would abandon her. She would lose both these cards and lose a heart on both of these politicians if she voted against it. So it would be disastrous for her, so she votes against it to keep her base happy. Okay, and then you, let's look at the fallout. So because she voted against it and it passed, as, we, as I don't know, count it up for you, so six plus five, that's 11, plus another three, that's 14 for her five. So it passes 14 to five, easily. So because she voted on the wrong side of history, she gets a heart, she can put this wherever she wants to. On the other hand, I get two points, one for sponsoring the bill, one for voting yes, and these guys get a vote, a point, a uh, power point, for, I say power of points, by the way, they, they mean the same thing. I just can't control my language. So this guy gets one point, one power, and this guy gets one point, one power each for uh, voting yes on something fast.
All right, next bill is up. Uh, here we have these guys. They propose this bill. I'm opposed to it because of my economic stance. This guy's really opposed to it uh, because it splits the difference between these two supporters. He's only got these two supporters, and uh, one of his supporters is for it, one of his supporters is against it. So that means no matter which way he votes, he's going to wind up betraying one of these two supporters, which is going to cost him one of his hearts. When you betray somebody, you lose that. Um, down here in this corner, she doesn't care. So let's say that I convince her somehow to vote against it because it's going to hurt me. Uh, it's going to hurt him. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know how I do this. But if I was at the table, this would be a real puzzle because I think she would actually want to vote for it. For the sake of argument, she votes against it with me and we defeat the bill. Regardless, this guy voted no with us. That's great. Uh, so he's going to save this supporter, but he betrayed his legalized weed supporters, as you can see here. They wanted him to vote yes. He voted no, he betrayed them. Uh, and so the fallout is kind of significant. This supporter now leaves, uh, which costs him a heart token. Over here in this player's corner, you can see that he voted yes, but the bill failed. So that costs him a heart token as well. Because it didn't pass, we blocked something, there are no points. Nobody gets any points. So even though we won the vote, we don't win a point or a power. So. When this heart goes on, Willie Dillinger, you can see that uh, he only has one heart to spare. So he retires. This is all he can take. He betrayed his one group. Now he's done. He's out. So this player has to discard both the politician and this support group. It's a terrible time for him. The remaining support card, by the way, goes into his, his hand here. He can save that and, and play it on a new politician when he gets a new politician next round. Uh, in the meantime, he's basically out of politicians. He's, he is adrift. However, he can still propose a card. I didn't want to deprive players of that opportunity. So if you're out of politicians, you still get to propose a, uh, or sponsor a bill. You just have to go last. So here's his bill. He sponsors this thing. Obviously, over here, uh, this player is going to be opposed to it because he has a lot of civil rights. On the other hand, he's banking that I'm going to be for it because I've got my uh, economics here. And he's also thinking that she's this player is going to be for it because it's worth a point. So it goes. Uh, this player votes yes, I vote yes, and then this player over here votes against it because uh, of these, he wants to preserve his uh, civil rights. And so he votes, votes along with his uh, crowd there. Notice, though, that I also had a civil rights card uh, down here. Now, let me talk a little bit about the calculus here. I already have blocked a bill that the economy focused support group wanted to be blocked. So that was successfully blocked. At the end of this round, if I still have this support card, that's going to be worth a point to me. Great. If I voted yes on this, I'm sorry, if I voted against this, I would have saved the civil rights card here, but I would have lost this card. You can see this splits these two cards. So I had to pick one to go with. This card over here is already worth a point, going to be worth a point at the end of the round here. So I voted for it to preserve my economic interest today. As a consequence, fallout again, a little complicated. It's probably the, the hardest part of the game is navigating the uh, fallout from the votes. So this guy voted no on something that did pass. So he loses a heart that he can assign anywhere. It did pass, so even though this top left player didn't vote, he gets a point for voting or for sponsoring something that successfully passed. Finally, down here in the bottom left, uh, this player voted yes and it passed, so that's worth a point. I also voted yes on something that passed, so I get a point, but I betrayed this interest group, so they leave and it costs Phyllis Jones here one of her hearts. All right, so that's what it looks like after all the voting is done. 
I've lost a couple hearts. This player's lost a couple of hearts. You can see that this politician only had one heart to spare. So we put both these hearts on this top politician. Now both of them are in a position where they both have only one heart to spare. And over here, uh, she's lost a, a heart as well. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to score based on the, the legislation that we've passed and blocked. So you can see up here, we've had two cards that went the way that we wanted the uh, that the economy focused folks wanted this to go right the economic support groups are happy on with the way two of these pieces of legislation went and so this card this economic focused card that i have is worth two points one for each of these cards that shows its icon and you can do you can do this very simply and very quickly just by looking at the icons so i have a uh, an economy support group i have one of those cards and there's two of these cards there so each of my cards is going to be worth two points. So if I had two cards, for example, it'd be worth four. If I had three cards, it would be worth six. Uh, same principle goes over here. So the gun rights guys had one bill go the way that they wanted it to go, so they get a point. And the education folks had one bill go the way that they wanted it to go, so they also get one. So now let's look at the final scores at the end of this round. Up in the top left, this guy's in shambles, but he does have three support groups that are ready to go. And so as soon as he puts down a politician, he'll be back in the game. And if you think about it, uh, this guy only has three support cards. I only have two. And the bottom left folk, uh, bottom left person only has two cards as well. So he's actually not doing too badly. Over here, you can see that this guy has three points, same as him. He's in a little better shape, but his politicians are only a heart away from death. And then down here, I'm sorry, from retirement. And then over here in the bottom, you can see that this, uh, this player has four points. They're doing okay. Uh, and then I actually have five points. This is actually a fairly good round for me, although I lost one of my support cards uh, the heart. So at the end of the round, we would take all of these legislation cards. We would discard them. They're now irrelevant. We would flip over the centerpiece. It would now say rounds two and four, and the arrows would be pointing the other way. So in round two, instead of passing to my left, I would now be passing to my right. The next thing we would do is deal out another six democracy cards to each player, and it would begin again. I'd pick one, pass now to my right, uh, and build up even more politicians, even more supporters, raise the stakes even higher. And each round, it gets a little more complicated and uh, each round, we start losing more and more politicians, and um, the complexity only grows. So that's it for me. I hope that you enjoyed this uh, little walkthrough of this game, and I hope you enjoy playing democracy.